Hey, what's up guys? The rank one, two, three, and four player in the world are all playing the exact same deck. For the first time in Clash Royale history, the leaderboard is monopolized by one strategy. Because if you play it to perfection, it destroys every deck. Constantly spamming Spear Goblins and Wall Breakers will keep your opponents worried and their elixir low. So when you outcycle their building, they're forced to use units to defend, which the Magic Archer will make his best friend. Piercing through and hitting tower to build you an unbelievable advantage. There is always outplay potential with this deck, whether it's with Tornado to line up your opponent's units with the Magic Archer right as they're about to leave, outcycling with the Wall Breakers, or clutching up with Creative King Tower activations to make your opponent struggle on offense for the rest of the match. It's time to magically shoot up the ranks with the skillful strategy and assert dominance. Lots of love to everyone that's using Critic Hood Tag to make all the daily videos possible. All right, we got a game here. So this guy's gonna have Fire Spirit and Ice Spirit in his banner. Probably gonna have a very fast cycle deck. Let's hit him up with the Spear Goblins and see what he's cooking. So he's exactly at 2,000 medals. Is there a possibility that I ruin that for him? I'm gonna go for Tornado on the Hog Rider. If you guys didn't know, I love Bomb Tower against Hog Rider. If they've got Hog Rider Earthquake and they drop 7 Elixir and you just drop a 4 Elixir Bomb Tower, you will be able to fully shut it down for a plus 3 Elixir trade every time. BT has got you covered. <laughs> so, what are we going to do? Do I decide to go in for a Magic Archer on Skeletons? You guys might be laughing at me and saying, Jake, this is stupid. But it works out if you're able to hit the Skeletons and uh, lock on a tower for like one hit. It's always worth it since you're able to stop their Hog Rider with like the Bomb Tower or a Tornado every time. So might as well get that chip damage as you can so that you don't get Earthquake cycled by your opponent. I'm going to log on top of the Musketeer as the tower is able to hit it so it doesn't get a shot. Then I'm going to Spear Goblins. I think I can go in for a Knight here and then go in for the Tornado still. So I just want to talk about something. If they go in for an Ice Spirit with their Hog Rider, sometimes they can mess up your Tornado timing. So you never want to have the Ice Spirit connected to the tower or get too close to the tower. So that's why I decided to drop the Knight there instead of just tornadoing and eating the Ice Spirit, if you guys didn't know. So we're going to go for Wall Breakers. He misses the cannon. Oh my gosh! What do the Wall Breakers look like when he's going to go towards the cannon? And it's like, nah, fam. I'm going to cannonball directly on the tower. That is incredible. <laughs> I think we just broke the heart in this guy's name. Oh, man. I feel a little bit de like evil whenever I play this deck. <laughs> I was going to say devilish, and I was going to say evil, and I was like, devil. It's a new word, guys. It's a new word. Trust me. It's, uh, it's certified by me. <laughs> Okay, so did he leave the game? Is he already mental? Oh my gosh. He's mentally devastated to the point that he knows that he won't be able to break through the bomb tower and the tornado. If you guys don't want to play against Hog Rider decks anymore that just spam Hog Riders at the river every single second, this is the deck to beat it. It's not even going to be difficult. You just have to memorize the correct tornado placement and you're going to win every time. Hog Riders are always used to breaking through, but not today. We broke down all of his towers and destroyed his will to play. And we're cycling through the ranks at 8,500 in the world. All right, we got a game against someone with a witch banner. I don't know which way you're going to turn. I don't know what deck you're going to be running, but I'm ready for it. Generally, whenever I've got Miner in my starting hand, I kind of like cycling my Wall Breakers in the back, but I think at this point, since I cycled the Wall Breakers so early on, he wasn't able to get value with his Bowler. So, if I can save my Tornado, I can activate King Tower against the Bowler. The scary thing is, I don't know what the rest of the cards are. So, if it's going to be like a Graveyard deck, activating King Tower here is like a game-winning play. Okay, you know what? We're going to activate King Tower against the Hog Rider anyway, so we're going to do this. Oh my gosh! Dude, don't try to Magic Archer me. I've got the Magic Archer. I don't appreciate that. Oh, come on. We're getting a taste of our own medicine right now, and it doesn't taste good. That Bowler Magic Archer thing did so much damage. Yo, I don't appreciate it at all. So, yeah, this is going to be the Battle of the Magic Archers. Who's going to win? The rocks or the magical arrows that look so much cooler? Bowler is one of those cards that people don't like. If you guys have ever looked at a thumbnail with Bowler, no one clicks on it for whatever reason. Y'all hate the bowler, but it's such a good card. If you survey top pro players and ask them what card they hate the most, surprisingly, a lot of them would say bowler. It's just a very strong card on offense, and it's great on defense, knocking things back. But you guys, you, you don't like it. I don't know why. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go for a tornado here, and he's going to go in for a tornado, of course. Let's go for a log so we can disrupt his bowler shot and make sure it doesn't hit my tower anymore. Holy heck, I gotta start going for Bomb Towers or we are gonna get finessed. Okay, okay, okay. We can go in for Wall Breakers and kite some of the Skeletons and then be okay. That was so good on our end. Let's go, guys. We popping off out here. We're not winning the game, but you know, it's, it's doing something. All right, we're gonna try to go opposite lane, obviously. If we go same side, we are definitely dead. I need to start using Bomb Tower against the Hog Rider as well. Wait. Is he in a Skeleton Army? We got Tornado. You're not back to Skeleton Army. We just countered it with the Wall Breakers. Oh, he isn't ready. He isn't ready. Oh my gosh. The Knight is a win condition now. The Knight's saying good night to the tower. That's what we like to see. Those good night kisses were precious. That was a lot of damage. 
Stop it! Dude! Calm down with the bowler at the river. Oh my goodness. Who who let you do that? You, you're an absolute savant out here. We're gonna have to tornado that away because it's just gonna do too much damage. I hate that so much. All right, we're gonna go for minor. Wallbreakers are gonna pre-log a skeleton army because that's what he's gonna do. Skeleton army in two seconds. Let's go! We make those plays all day long. Eating your tower for breakfast, bro. Get at me. Okay, I'm getting way too hyped up for a mobile game. I need to calm down for a second. Like, not a life or death situation, but maybe it is for my magic archer. His pride is on the line. He can't lose to a magic archer bowler. It just can't happen in this match. I refuse to lose this game. Okay, he's got a tornado. Feels bad, man. <laughs> All right, so genuinely, I'm just going to cycle my spear goblins here and then pray that we can defend this hog rider that's coming at me in any second. Oh, great. I love that the hog rider went closer to my tower. Said no one ever. All right, so I'm going to go in for the, the miner in this spot and then pre-log a skeleton army that has to come down again. Maybe we're going to win the game here. I hope so, at least. Maybe. All right. I can't drop a preemptive bomb tower because we don't know what side he's going to go in for the hog rider in. So that would be a huge overcommitment. I can go for wall breakers, though. And then I can go for magic archer. And then I can probably just tornado and log. I just don't see a universe where you let... <laughs> yeah. I was going to say. There's no universe where you're not going to let the magic archer connect because he deserves the W. Finishing with the magic archer to assert utter dominance against the bowler in a 1v1 face-off in the end is the best way to win that match. Asserting dominance and showing the superiority of our magical sir. And we've arrowed our way up to 7,200 in the world. So we got a game against Mask. Let's rip the mask off and see what he's playing. He's going to go in for uh, archers in the back and skeletons, so it's got to be an expo deck. There's no doubt about it. Fortunately for us, the spear goblins still provide some semblance of value. So, oh wait, what? Guys, I thought it was expo. But now he's got Monk, and I'm really confused. Let it make sense. Make it make sense. Okay, we can go for Wall Breakers here. I don't think that's a bad decision, but I'm going to go and drop it in the other side away from the Monk. We can log here, and we'll see what he decides to do. I can pull the Monk with Spear Goblins and maybe force out the ability that he wouldn't want to drop. So if you guys didn't know, Spear Goblins range allows you to, to pull Monk from a very far distance, which wasn't possible before. Does he actually have Expo with Monk? I mean, it would make sense. It's a pretty strong card combination. We're already back to another set of wall breakers, so that's nice. We can go for a log on top of the archers and also elixir collector. Yo, he missed the skeletons. That's huge. Okay, let's magic archer right down the middle because we were able to pierce through the archers and then also hit the tower. I think that's worth it because we get an extra shot with that. For one shot on the archer, we're able to end up getting a lot of damage. And also, as you guys saw, he ended up missing the monk there too. He was really trying to finish it off and he wasn't able to for a while. I could have activated King Tower if the monk had more health, but obviously that's not possible there. All right. We want to go in for a knight and then wall breaker so we can never afford his elixir collector to feel safe. This is going to be perpetually defending. Oh, that splashes through and hits the wall breakers. No, it hit the knight first. Oh my gosh. So if you didn't know, he wasn't dumb there. I actually thought that the firecracker would win that as well. If the firecracker is lined up perfectly and there's nothing tanking for the wall breakers at all, then the wall breakers will definitely die to the firecracker if you drop it early enough in that placement. So that guy made a really good play, and I've d done that a million times whenever I've countered wall breakers cycled from the same side. So it's really surprising. I did not know that interaction. The knight buffers you just enough to barely be able to tank for the remainder of the damage that we, uh, we had to there. Okay, so the difficulty in this matchup is obvious, right? We have no way of breaking through the wall breakers into this because he's going to have firecracker and log and the monk reflects back our magic archer and our bomb tower it's just really annoying so we have to use our bomb tower as a method of tanking and then we can go in for like magic archers and spear goblins and stuff like that afterward all right so we're going to go in for our magic archer here and we want to hold everything in place and then log and then maybe get spear goblins down in time oh man ruthless with the aggression from this man Fortunately, he doesn't have log back in cycle, so we could maybe make something happen. If I can go and snipe the firecracker, that would be a vibe. How is the firecracker missing all of our units? He really should get more value than that. All right, if I magic archer early on, that will give us a bunch of damage and force out the monk ability. So then he can't use it on top of what he wants, which would be the bomb tower and magic archer. And thank you for the expo. So we prevented him from getting that value that he's hoping for. Now we can log so we can guarantee finish off the archers. And then we can go in for a knight and probably go in for spear goblins and minor in this placement. So genuinely, I would like to go in for a Magic Archer to try to snipe the tower, but it didn't work out. Hmm. Okay, okay. Yo, the Firecracker's gonna go in the other side that he doesn't want to be dropping it in. Wait, what if I just do this? I think I Bomb Tower and play defensive, and then Wall Breakers again, and then maybe get a Knight down, and then try to go for a Magic Archer on this tower. Just to force out extra Elixir there. Pressure him a bit, you know? Make him feel uncomfortable. 
and also kill the Expo that was inevitably going to get a ton of damage on my tower. Okay, uh, I can go in for Spear Goblins to go and pull back the rest of the Monk, and then I can go for Minor Wall Breakers. It looks like he's just drastically overcommitting right now. I think he's amazingly overcommitting. Both the Wall Breakers should connect, because the Miner's tanky. Even if he logs, he's not going to be able to finish it off. Wow. GG and well played to him. I'm so happy we destroyed an Expo deck. It's even more satisfying when he's got Monk for my Magic Archer and Bond Tower. Because that matchup seems way more messy. And guys, I have a slight confession. When I looked at his clan name, I was like, Smile or Slime? And I just could not read it correctly. I guess in the end, both of them fit because I'm smiling after I slime the Expo strategy. Those slippery wall breakers found a way through when my opponent and I had no clue that that would happen. I learned something new in Clash Royale every day. And we're breaking through the ranks to 6,500 in the world. All right, this guy's a part of the One Life clan. Well, we've got multiple lives because we're cycling two wall breakers out here. And he's already aggravated by our deck. He sees the wall breaker. He's like, I don't want to play against this. All right, we've just beat Expo. Are we going to be playing against that again? We already beat Expo. Oh, it's not Expo. We see archers, and it's always surprising me with a champion, you know? Last time it was Monk. Now it's the Golden Boy. All right, we're going to go for a log here. We're going to get some extra damage and see if he wants to click the ability. And we're going to go for Spear Goblins and make him waste it. Yes! Yes! <laughs> waste your precious elixirs, sir. That's awesome. Okay, we're going to go for a minor wall breaker here on the left-hand side because we see Electric Giant, right? And if you guys like seeing Electric Giant, yeah, most people don't, you know? You would be one of the few. <laughs> So we're going to be going in for a bomb tower here, and it should be able to fully shut down the Electro Giant. Always want to save your Tornado if your opponent has Electro Giant, because they could Lightning on your uh, bomb tower. And if they do, then that's what you want to do. So we're just going to Tornado everything back so then he doesn't get as much damage. I could have activated King Tower with the Fisher, uh, the Phoenix. Wow, it's like Fisherman activates King Tower. Phoenix sounds like Fisherman. Same thing, right? The Fisher Phoenix. That would have been pretty OP. But yeah, I wish I could have activated King Tower with the Phoenix. Wasn't able to because I had to tornado back the Electro Giant because it would have done too much damage. You guys let me know down below in the comment section. Would it have been worth it to activate King Tower with the Phoenix? Or would it have been better to just mitigate the damage from the Electro Giant that I did? I just don't want to lose against the Electro Giant, so I did the safer play. Okay, wait, wait, wait. What if I do this? And then he can't dash on top of the Magic Archer and he dashes on the Miner. That would be so funny. <laughs> Yo, this is awesome. He wasted a tornado too. Well, we're going to show you how to tornado now, man. How do you like that? How do you like that right now? He doesn't. He just goes in for an E-Giant in the back. Okay. Acceptable. I'd probably do the same thing. Oh, he's, he's actually aggravated to get at this point. If the game's not over that, because that Electro Giant could get pushed by a Golden Knight, and it could give me a really bad time. When they drop the Electro Giant in the corner like that, you have to drop a Bomb Tower in a bit of a safer spot than the most optimal pull radius that I just showed earlier. Man, this is not going to be an easy defense. He's going to Lightning on me right now, too. I need to be able to go in for Tornado to go and pull back the Electro Giant, and then I want to log on top of the Phoenix Egg. Man, I'm going to take so much damage right now because I didn't activate King Tower. Oh, please stop the bleeding. Stop it, stop it, stop it. All right, we're going to go Knight, so then the Golden Knight dashes on that. We can go for Spear Goblins after. This is looking really sketchy because he played that super well with the Electro Giant in the corner. So I couldn't drop it in the most optimal spot. Okay, uh, I think I need to be able to take the tower here so I can Magic Archer and then probably even log on top of the Barbarian Barrel. No, I missed the Barbarian Barrel. Wait, what? Uh, 500 HP. Lightning doesn't do enough, right? So we're going to try to do something like this. Maybe go for a really high bomb tower here. I think we're barely going to win. It's going to be like one of the closest W's ever. He's going to try to do some shenanigans with like a tornado, but he's not going to be able to make it happen. He's going to go directly into the wrong stuff. Look at that. He's inches away from perfection, but he wasn't able to afford the W. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Such a close and clutch win. The hilarious thing is lightning does 420 damage, so he was 4 HP from taking my tower there. In retrospect, if I had activated King Tower against the Phoenix earlier, that would have definitely been the better play. We would have been able to crush the Electro Giant that got onto our tower, and with the King Tower putting in work, the game wouldn't have been near as close. Yo, this guy finished 538 in the world. Okay, guys, for the last game of the day, we got to ramp up the difficulty. No mediocre, only wins against top ladder players. So we're going to try our hardest. You guys know the deal. We're going for a knight here. We see bar barrels. So it's probably going to be another beatdown deck. We beat down the Electro Giant. So now what are we facing? Goblin Hut. Ah, oh, man. That card's everywhere. So the wall breakers, I don't know if they get pulled or not. I actually am unaware. I could go in for a Magic Archer, but I think that'd be bad. Oh my goodness. I want to. I really want to. But I think I'm going to get graveyarded. So I don't want to. All right, we're going to go in for a Bomb Tower here. Maybe we can end up hitting some of the Spear Goblins. It's going to lock onto the Skeleton King. All right, we can log on top of the Spear Goblins right now. And then we can go in for a Hut counter with the log. And then get some old Spear Goblins on the right-hand side. 
It seems like it's going to be a Spear Goblin City match, guys. It's not Game of Thrones. It's Game of Spear Goblins. <laughs> That's what li world we're living in. So generally, in this type of environment, I want a Magic Archer because it pierces through the hut and all of his bait cards, and it gives us lots of value. The difficulty is we don't actually get the opportunity to do that because he decides to go in for a graveyard. So, hmm. Hmm. The guy is just playing pretty aggressive. It's definitely the right play to do. It's an annoying deck to match into. So I'm going to go for Miner, and I'm going to go in for Wall Breakers as well, and we'll see what we can get, because he doesn't have Rascals in cycle. He's got to go Goblins and Skeleton King, most likely. I don't think the Skeleton King's able to stop the Wall Breakers, so that's a ton of damage. Always trying to pressure our opponent when they're at a low amount of Elixir is the way to play this deck, so you can find opportunities to deal damage. Even if your opponent goes in for a Graveyard and gets a lot, you'll get more from them. But also, the Skeleton King ability was really bad there. I wonder why he was doing that. Because obviously, the Spear Goblins will clean it up, and that's two Elixir down the drain that you have to respond to again. Oh, the Knight's going to hit the Barbarrel! That's huge. Now I don't have to respond to that. Usually, that would get a hit on my tower. He wants to go on the same side as me so he can defend my units and then get counter push. And ideally, that's not what happens. So we can go for Magic Archer up high when he goes in for a Goblin Hut. I expect him to do it soon. So let's just do that right now. We want to pierce onto the Spear Goblins and also hit the Hut at the same time. If you went in for the Phoenix there, I can maybe activate King Tower. Actually, I'm like 90% confident that I can. We'll find out. Does it have enough HP? Just one hit. Yes! We activated King Tower against Graveyard. You messed up, sir. That's what I'm talking about. Always take those opportunities. I could go in for a Magic Archer right now, but I'm so excited. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to overcommit and make a mess up. we got to beat this Graveyard deck. One of the most annoying decks in Clash Royale against a top 500 player. I need this to happen right now. This will be the best way to end the day. The Skeleton King is going to give him a considerable amount of damage. Not okay. Not fine. How that did that much damage hate that card too. It's so skillless. He's got like the epitome of no skill in Clash Royale with this deck. Easiest deck to play in the game for sure. All right, Spear Goblins somehow find a way to lock out of my tower. See, like the game is still not over until it's over. That's the crazy thing about it. All right, we're going to go in for the Magic Archer Tornado and then Magic Archer at zero HP is doing so much damage. Oh my goodness. Magic Archer, you really earned the title. You really put it in the work. I love it. All right, we're going to go in for another Magic Archer. We do have Tornado lined up for his Skeleton King ability. We want to make sure that the Spear Goblins put in enough damage. I can get a Knight down here as well. Man, this is really looking bad at the same time. I need to log so the Spear Goblins don't immediately die, and then I can go Wall Breakers to pull back his Phoenix. Or I guess I didn't need to. I really thought I did for a second, though. All right, we're going to go for Spear Goblins again. The Goblins are out of cycle, so he has no good answer to the Miner. Then I can go in for a Knight and put up... A pretty aggressive stance, so our opponent is forced to go in for cards that he doesn't want to, like maybe even a Skeleton King, hopefully. He doesn't do it. He's dropping in a different spot. All right, we can go for Magic Archer and line up the Goblin Hut and then finish that off ideally. Wait, really? How'd that not... I guess it's going to line up eventually, but it took forever. We can go in for another set of Spear Goblins in the back, go in for a Miner and the safe spot that he's not able to finish that off, and then with the Spear Goblins, I think I'm A-OK to defend this with just a Knight, and we should be able to get everything out of our sight. Man, this matchup is really scary sometimes. Like, <laughs> I just don't like the fact that he can poison on my Spear Goblins and stuff like that. All right, we're going to go for another Magic Archer up high, so then he's not able to finish that off very easily. We're going to go in for a Tornado again on top of the Phoenix. It still killed it, though. Man, crazy how much damage he's about to get on me. We want to be able to get a Knight down and another set of Spear Goblins. He's definitely going to be able to shut down all of our stuff. I need to go for a Log on his Spear Goblins. They're about to float on my tower somehow. And then we got a Tornado back his Phoenix. And then we can maybe go in for a Minor inside corner. Spear Goblins are not going to lock on my tower, thankfully. All right, is he going to go in for Barbro? Is he going to go for Phoenix? He's going to drop anything here. All right, we need to get, like, this Magic Archer Tornado and Knight, and then we can probably get a pretty good alignment. We're going to go in for Spear Goblins to Body Block and keep our Magic Archer alive at zero HP, maybe? Okay, it didn't really work as planned. It's really not working as planned. We got to go in for Tornado to go and pull back his Skeleton King and also his aggressive Phoenix, so then the Magic Archer can do its due diligence and finish it all off. We're going to go in for Spear Goblins afterward. If he tries to go in for anything, I think we barely got the game. Definitely not... Oh, wait. Definitely not over. Definitely not over. Definitely not over. No, please, please, please give me the win. I hate this deck so much. Thank God. Oh, my goodness. Quite possibly one of the most infuriating decks to play against in Clash Royale. Against a top 500 player. And we walk away with the win. Gotta be honest with y'all. I don't win that matchup that often. Just because Skeleton King does so much damage. Coupled with the overpowered Spear Goblin Hut. That is bound to get nerfed sometime soon. It's nice to see skill prevail against such a skillless monstrosity. And if I learned anything in the last two games, it shows you the power of activating King Towers. In the match that I didn't do it, I really needed it. And in the last one, I couldn't have won without it. Like, subscribe for more daily videos, and have an amazing rest of your day.